For the part 2 of the TOGAF examination, you should be aware of how to apply the ADM phase in developing the enterprise architecture. In this video, we will be looking into the steps of the preliminary phase of the ADM. Now, I will not be going into details of this preliminary phase, steps like what are the objectives, input, output of this phase, as I have already covered these in detail in another video, the link of which will be, which I'll add below. In this video, let's focus on the steps and approach of this phase, which is crucial to crack TOGAF part 2 exam. So let's get started. We have seen earlier that preliminary phase has two objectives. One, to determine the desired architecture capability and the second, to establish the architecture capability. So the first step of the preliminary phase is to determine the scope of the enterprise organization and what other units or section of the enterprise organization are impacted. Now, typically in a large organization, there are multiple architecture initiatives going on across different business units. Say, finance business unit may have its own architecture framework or initiative, and the technology and the operation division of the organization can have its own architecture initiative. Now, you need to understand where is the architecture initiative that you're planning to undertake will fit in. How does it work with other initiative? Will it work as an independent initiative or will it be working in sync with other initiatives? As per TOGAF, there are five general groups that get impacted by architecture initiative. Core enterprise, that is the direct architecture team or unit that's impacted by your work. Soft enterprise, they are not directly impacted, but they need to do some changes to accommodate the architecture initiative that is undertaken. A good example is say when you introduce a new business process, which may not lead to a direct impact, but lead to some changes in the BAU process. Extended enterprise are the units outside the scope of the enterprise. Next is stakeholders who are impacted due to the architecture initiative are categorized as communities. These could be sales team, end users or customer. And finally, applying governance to this initiative impacts the governance. So the governance group is the last group. So that's the first step that is to identify the scope of the architecture work and check on other groups like core, soft, extended communities and governance. Now the second step is what type of governance setup will you follow? and also to establish the governance framework. Governance is important to ensure change happens in a safe and orderly fashion, and the enterprise architecture framework is not disrupted by introducing a change. Change will always happen in business, and there could be change in process or step. So how gracefully the enterprise framework accepts change is the key, and a good governance framework help with that. The governance framework include a change request methodology framework on how the changes are approved or disapproved, accepted, handled, and implemented. Third step is to establish the architecture team. So the question to ask is, do you have any existing architecture capability or team? Will you be hiring the team? Check the maturity assessment. That is, if the organization is ready to establish architecture framework and if there is enough support to implement the architecture framework. Is gaps identified in, in implementing this architecture framework and is something being done about it? Also in this step, we check if there is sufficient budget allocated and if there is sponsors identified to carry out the architecture framework. Understand constraint like time or skill constraint and get the agreement of the project sponsor and get them on board. Get and assign responsibility to individuals for the key role. So the part three is all about ensuring there is a proper architecture team and sponsor. Step four is to define the architecture principle. Architecture principle is guiding force to make architecture decision. So if there is no proper architecture principle, it's difficult to say no to certain request. It's a guiding force like a compass which guides you in direction. 
An example, if in the enterprise you have principle that for any communication between two application or system, you need to have a domain API defined, then it becomes a easy or it becomes like a guiding force to not to allow any other legacy communication mechanism between application. If for some reason you're not able to follow the principle, it needs to be documented as to what is the reason and it need to be discussed and approved with the architecture board. The next step is to tailor the architecture framework. TOGAF 9 standard is meant to be tailored. You need to go through the ADM step and adapt and tailor it as per your need. Remove the step that's not relevant to you or add in the step if you integrate with other framework. Especially for the first time, it's a challenge to adapt all the step. So check what you so check what can be adapted and progressively iterate with other steps. Step six, the last step is all about tools. Develop a strategy for tools. Will you be using a custom tool or third party tools? Tool helps in documenting, retention, searching, and version control of architecture documents and artifacts. So these are the six steps of the preliminary phase. In the next video, we will be looking into the step of the next phase. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. Thank you.